Hello and welcome everyone to my channel Code with Ease. So today we are going to discuss about a very popular searching algorithm, the binary search algorithm. Along with that, we'll also discuss quickly about the linear search algorithm also. But the main focus of the session would be to discuss about the binary search algorithm. In the upcoming sessions, we are also going to discuss about the code implementation and also the questions related to binary search will be discussed in the upcoming sessions. So here's the outline of the two sessions. Today we are going to cover the part one in which we are going to discuss about the overview of the linear search algorithm, the binary search algorithm, how it works. We'll do a whiteboarding to understand and do a dry run also. And we'll also discuss about this algorithmic paradigm, which is the decrease and conquer technique, which is being used in binary search. That is what we are going to cover in the part one. In the second part of the video is where we are going to cover the code implementation, the iterative code, as well as the recursive code. And then we'll discuss on the performance. So that will wrap up the two sessions of binary search. And later on, and then as part of the same series, we are going to also discuss about the questions related to binary search. There are quite a few of them, very tricky and challenging questions related to binary search, which we are going to discuss one by one. So stay tuned. Hi, here's a brief introduction for the ones who are new to the channel. The objective of Code with Ease is to make problem solving and programming simpler. If you are someone who wants to become a great developer and wants to level up their skills, data structures and algorithms is indispensable and you need to form a solid foundation of that. And this is exactly where we come in. Because we post topic-wise video explanations in Java on various coding interview questions that can not only help to crack the coding interview, but also help to improve and refine the problem-solving abilities as a developer. And finally, here is the USP of our channel. We code every solution live, we do not copy-paste code snippets. We start off by clearly defining the problem statement, the given inputs, the required output, time and space complexities. We also then discuss the brute force way of solving any question without jumping on to the solution and then gradually move on to the optimal solution. We try to use online whiteboarding wherever applicable to explain the approach and the concepts. So that is all about us. So if you guys also want to be a part of this journey, do support us by subscribing to the channel. So with that, now let's get back to the question. Before we understand binary search or linear search, we have to understand the basis of any searching algorithm. Why do we even need to learn about searching algorithm? So for that, we have to understand what even is searching and why, why is it so relevant nowadays. Whenever we try to solve any problem where we have to write a code to search for a certain value among a set of values or a very large set of values, we have to use some kind of algorithm to try to search for that. In day-to-day -day life, we even do Google search to find out something, right? So find, trying to find out something, trying to look up for something always uses in the back end some kind of an algorithm. So the knowledge of binary search algorithm can also help us to solve some real world use cases, which we are anyway going to see when we are trying to solve other questions related to binary search. But then understanding the central idea of an algorithm will always make it easier for us to solve any given question that is related to binary search or to solve any real world scenario using binary search. So at first we are starting with linear search algorithm, it's a very plain and simple algorithm, uh, forms the basis of any searching algorithm. This is not quite relevant in solving real world scenarios because of the time complexity which is linear. And here's the pseudo code for linear search. How it works is, if we are given an item to be searched in a list, so we traverse the entire list and we just do this check whether that item is equal to what we were looking for. If it is found, then we return the location of the item, otherwise we just keep on uh, running this loop and at the end, we end this method like saying that the item is not found. This is a plain and simple way of thinking of trying to search for anything in a given data set and if it is found, we return the location. If it is not found, then we say it is not found. So now let's talk about the binary search algorithm. So how this algorithm is actually different from linear searches. In linear search, we were trying to traverse the entire list or array whatever to find that element. But in case of binary search, we are trying to use a trick by reducing the problem space. How we are doing that is, firstly, we are using an array which is sorted. And then once the array is sorted, then we are dividing the array into halves and looking for the element in a particular half of the array, either the left half of the array or the right half of the array and, and so on. And in that way, we are reducing the problem space in which we are trying to look for an element. And as a result of this, we achieve a better time complexity than linear search, which is O of log n. In linear search, we are getting O of m. Now we will move to the whiteboard to understand how this algorithm works and we will also do a try run. So now we will just do a very quick whiteboarding of uh, how this binary search algorithm works. So I've taken this array, the prerequisite I've written, what is the prerequisite for binary search algorithm to work, as we've discussed, the array has to be sorted. So if initially the array is unsorted, we can use in Java, there is a built-in function, arrays.sort, and then we can sort the array. After we sort the array is when we can apply the binary search logic to it. In binary search, there are these three pointers which we use. So low and high pointer and the mid pointer. Low pointer is going to be equal to zero initially. It starts from the beginning and high pointer is the one which starts from the back. What is mid? Mid is going to be equal to low plus high by 2. Later on, we are going to see how can we optimize this formula. But as of now, let's just try to understand low plus high by 2 is the mid. Mid, low and high 
Always remember these are not the elements, these are the pointers. So they are pointing to the index of the element and not to the element. And here I have written the target. So when we are doing a search, we are obviously looking for an element. So we are searching for this value 9 in this array. So here is the value 9. What we have to return? We have to return the index of the value if it is found. If it is not found, we usually return minus 1. It starts from 0, 1, 2 and 3. So our required answer should be 3. As we discussed earlier also, this algorithm is always trying to split the array into half and that is the reason why we are computing this mid. So with that approach in mind that we are trying to make the problem space shorter by dividing the array into half and then again half of half like 1 by 2 and then 1 by 4 and so on. Keeping that approach in mind, let's move ahead. So initially we will have a loop and this we are going to run from low, starting from the low and we are going to run it till the high point, I mean, starting from the beginning till the end. Inside this we are going to compute the mid using this formula that we just discussed. So, after doing this, then we do three things. Number one, we check if the ARR of mid means this value at the mid, if this is exactly equal to what we were looking for. Might happen that whatever the uh, element we were looking for is actually we have found at the exactly the middle position of the array only. If that is the case, what we should return? We have to return the index. What is the index? Mid is the index. We will return mid. Now comes the actual binary search algorithm where we are trying to shorten the problem space. If it is equal equal to target, we are returning fine. Else, let's say if this element that we have found, if that element is lesser than the target, like the target is 9 and let's say our mid is at 7. 7 is less than 9. So, if 7 is less than 9, means the mid, the ARR of mid is less than 9 and I have the low pointer on the left side and the high pointer. What, what should I ideally be doing? Should I try to search for this element in this half, in the initial half or should I try to search it in the this half? I should try to search it in the bigger half. So, if my low is let's say over at 3 and high is over here, I don't need my low to be here. I need to move the low a bit ahead. So, I will do low equal to mid plus 1. So, now I am again increasing. So, now again I am trying to manipulate the problem space in such a way so that wherever there is a more probability of the target element to lie, I am going to adjust the low pointer to the, that place. So that is why there is no point in searching for an element before the mid because the mid itself is lesser than the target means it still has a long way to go. So there is no point in searching before mid. We have to search after mid because we have to search after mid that is why I have made low equal to mid plus 1. And the other part is else what will be the other condition if it is not equal if it is not less it should be greater than so ARR if the ARR of mid we will not write this I am just writing it to explain if it is greater than the target okay. So in this case let us say we are at 19. We need to find out 9 and we are at 19. There, is there any point in searching beyond 19? Because if 19 itself is greater than 9, 72, 91 or anything after 19 will be because the array is sorted. So now I have to reduce my problem space and, space and try to move towards the beginning. So, so that is why I have to make sure that the high pointer comes before mid. That So the high will be now equal to mid minus 1. Simple thing, whenever it is lesser than the target, the ARR of mid means the current mid element. If it is lesser than the target, make the low, low pointer move forward in order to find the element. Or if it is greater, then you have to make the high pointer come towards the lower side. So, this low in this case is going towards the higher side. And in this case, the high is coming towards the lower side. This is how you can visualize. This is what is going to happen inside this while loop till this breaks. When it breaks, we have to return minus 1. Why? If at all this condition turns out to be true, means we have found our target element, we are anyway going to return mid. But if we never found the target element, we have to return minus 1. That's it. So now let's quickly do a dry run on this. So this is the new target, 19. And this is the mid. So the ARR of mid is 7. 7 is less than 90. If it is less than 90, low is already over here. So now we have to bring low forward. Now, low should be mid plus 1. So, low should be now over here. High is anyway over here. Recalculating the mid, 6 plus 4, 10 by 2 is 5. So, mid will be over here. So, anyway, we have found the required answer. So, 19 will be returned. Let's say we change our mid to, let's say we change the target to 4. So, the mid is recalculated. 7 is greater than 4. Whenever it is greater than 4, the high should come backward. So, high should now be over here. Low is at 0, high is at over here and the mid will be recalculated. So, when it is recalculated, this becomes the mid. So, again 3 is less than 4. So, low should come forward. It should be mid plus 1. So, low should be over here and the new mid will be calculated and mid and mid will be also be here. So, now mid, high and low are at the same position and ARR of mid is also our required target. So, that is why 
this index proved in good return and we have got our answer. So now we are going to wrap up today's sessions by discussing about this algorithmic paradigm in which we are going to discuss how are we calculating the mid earlier and how are we supposed to calculate the mid. So in the dry run, we were trying to calculate the mid using the above formula, low plus high divided by 2. But there is a drawback of doing this and that is if the values of low and high are such that adding them causes a overflow of the integer data type, like if it exceeds the maximum positive value of the integer, then in that case, we will receive an exception. Hence, it is advised to not calculate mid by simply adding the low plus high, but rather use the second formula in which we are doing a high minus low, we are taking the difference of that, then we are dividing that by 2 and then adding this to the low. At any given point in time, the integer data type, which is the int mid, is not going to store anything which is greater than the maximum positive value of integer. You guys can also try it out by using any of the practice links that I've given in the description. If you see that, if you use the earlier formula, uh, you might see that some of the test cases are failing. But the moment you change the formula to the second one, the test cases will pass. Th this is the reason why this happens. So with that, that's a wrap on today's session. In the next session, we are going to do the code implementation of binary search, the iterative way, the recursive way. And also, we are going to talk about the performance. Do let us know in the comments below if you guys have any questions or doubts or you want to share any feedback on this video. If you have enjoyed the session so far, do hit the like button so that this can reach out to many more people. And if it does, it just gives us enough motivation to put out more such content. Also, if you are looking forward to more videos like this, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon next to the subscribe button to never miss an update on our upcoming videos. Thank you so much for watching.